Leave it 51, turn right heading 180. For plane spotting content, feel free to drop me a follow over on TikTok at DJ's Aviation, where I will now be posting. So, Airbus and Boeing have both their own double-decker from the likes of the A380 to the 747. However, there's one major difference between these two, and that's the fact that the Airbus A380 is indeed a full twin-deck aircraft. That means from its front to the back towards the tail region, it is two full decks, unlike the Boeing 747, which only has the iconic hump towards the front of the body and nearer to the cockpit. However, Boeing were indeed researching a double-decker back in the 1990s which would fit the 500-plus seat market and would have directly rivaled the Airbus A380 and, in addition, the MD-12, which is also another concept double-decker. In today's video, I'll be taking a look at the aircraft and also where it went wrong. The Boeing 763... Dash 246C was another name for the Boeing NLA. However, that's far more complicated as you can probably already imagine. So the Boeing NLA name stuck. NLA standing for New Large Airplane. Boeing continued through the early 1990s to study this concept, but eventually gave up on it in favour of further developing the Boeing 747, something I'll be getting into later on in this video. When it came to further developing the Boeing 747, this was in the form of the 747-500X, 747-600X, and then the 747-X, finally the 7476 stretch, and you really get where I'm headed with that. These are all concepts that were featured here on the channel, and one day we'll cover them all in one big video if you do wish. The 1990s, you could definitely argue, were an experimental phase for Boeing in understanding how they would fit another aircraft in the 400 to 500 plus seat market. And eventually, they settled on the Boeing 7478. Of course, similar to the Airbus A380, this never really hit the ground running. As if anything, Boeing, similar to Airbus with their A380, which was saved by Emirates, it just came too late. And at a time where twin-engined, fuel-efficient jets were beginning to be preferred within the aviation industry. We can directly look at the Airbus A330 and Boeing 777 as examples of this. Of course, while they are not comparable, statistically speaking, to the likes of the A380 and 747, they were definitely more fuel efficient moving forward. The Boeing NLA was set to seat around 600 passengers as per Flight Global, with a range of some 12,600 kilometres or 6,800 nautical miles. However, other concepts did exist online, with concepts clearly showing a single-decker version that featured some 450 seats. This will be covered in an upcoming video, as it was often mistaken for the NLA, which is actually something totally different. In fact, if we go back to 1991, United Airlines actually called the Boeing NLA the N650. But how did this aircraft, with the world at its feet, seemingly collapse before Boeing and the world's very eyes? That is something I'll be getting into right now. In an economic sense, the Boeing NLA simply wasn't going to work. Boeing believed that the 747 would have a long and also sustainable future within the aviation industry. As the president of Boeing Commercial, Ron Woodard, said all the way back in 1995, once again thanks to Flight Global. They saw other variations of the 747 types that would work long into the future. Adjusting their already pre-existing body of the highly successful 747 just slightly and also improving it where customers would want was more feasible in the long run and in turn birthed what we now know today as the 7478. On top, adjusting their Boeing 747s to build aircraft like the Dash 500, Dash 600 and so on, they would be able to capitalise on customers already interested in the Boeing 747 series and ones that already had it in their operations. Unfortunately though, in this case, while the aircraft manufacturer saw its failed NLA disappear, interest in the 747 series quickly faded away in favour of the 777 series and other twin engines jets being discussed by aircraft manufacturers. Eventually, this would lead on into the early 2000s where we would see the birth of the A350 with Airbus and the 787 Dreamliner with Boeing, two highly successful wide-body jets that have really taken the aviation industry by storm. If you have any thoughts on Boeing's failed double-decker and the reasons why they dropped it in favour of the 747 series, which as we know did not necessarily hit the ground running after the 747-400s and the, you could argue, past generations, not the Dash 8, let me know down in the comments. Once again, if you enjoy these types of videos, just feel free to let me know. And I do very much look forward to you all joining me in the next video. Take care and stay safe. <laughs>